Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to virtualize Windows 10 on your Apple Silicon Mac using QEMU's hypervisor and Alexander's patch that he put together to make this all work. It's really exciting, but it's also in its very, very early stages here. A lot of things don't work, but it shows the possibilities of what we might be able to do in the future. I'm gonna show you how to download the preview of Windows 10 ARM Edition and also configure QEMU to run and install all. Let's jump right in and get started. QEMU is an emulator and a virtualizer and it's open source. It can now run the ARM version of Windows 10 on Apple Silicon. This is really exciting and it really looks into the future to see what could be possible here. We got to give credit to Alexander. You can see in his tweet here that he says that it's running very well and it's pretty snappy. He was able to put together a patch to make this work. So I thought it would be fun to just jump in and try to see if we can get this to work on our Apple Silicon Mac. Okay. A next hat tip that we got to give to is Mac Rumor Forum user 1958Lacken. He was able to put together this really nice instruction sheet. I mean, he really went to town on this. I mean, look at this. I mean, he really did a wonderful job putting together full instructions on how to build the scripts and all the pieces needed with Homebrew and Python to be able to make this work if you wanted to do it itself. He actually already pre-built this and put it into a downloadable piece that we can use right now to jump in and get started. What do we need to do to start? Well, first we need our Apple Silicon Mac and that's what we're on right now. What we also need to do is download the Insider Edition the ARM64 edition of Windows 10. You see right here, download link here is directly to Microsoft's ins Windows Insider Preview. So we can right click on this and we'll open that up so you can see what that looks like. What you have to do is sign in first with a Microsoft email address or an ID to be able to become a member of the Windows Insider program. And it's very easy. This is the link and I'll put this in the description. You click you know, learn more here and then you just register. You click register, you sign in right here and before you know it you're a part of the program once you're in inside and it only takes literally 10 seconds to go through the setup to sign in and then you're automatically registered in the program and when you click on this link here it'll bring you right to the download and I've got it right here and if you look this file here is our 8.17 gigs so it'll take a little bit of time to download but once you have it you're ready to go the next thing we need to do is download qemu here and build that was put together here and it was that's why it's saving us so much time this is wonderful that he put together this whole build in in zip form with all the pieces now if you wanted to build this manually you could so he's got the steps here to build it from the source with Alexander's patch right here and everything that you need to do. So if you wanted to do this as a little fun project, be my guest and do it, it'd be great. But what's nice is he already put this together in, a, in this attachment. Again, I'll put this link in the description. So all we need to do is click on this and we'll download the zip with all the files in it that we're gonna need. Now it's in the downloads folder. So let's go up to the next step here. We are going to open up terminal and we're going to change the directory into the downloads folder that we just did. If you click on downloads, you can see that we've got the QEMU folder, M1 folder. Let's open that up so you guys can see with it what's in there. And here's all the builds that we need. So let's move this off to the side here and we're going to open up terminal and we are going to cut and paste this and we're going to change the directory into our home folder downloads and the QEMU folder. Now that we're in there, we can start running commands directly from there. Before we do that, we need to move, that's the other part of this, is that we have to move the actual Windows 10 ARM edition into the folder. So you can see here's the build folder that we just changed the directory into, and here's our ARM edition of Windows 10. So we're going to just drag that in, and then once it's in the folder, everything we need is ready to go. So let's go back to Terminal. Now we're here and we next are going to start the virtual, the QEMU virtual machine with this block of text. We're gonna, we're gonna copy this entire block here, copy, and then we're gonna go back to the terminal and we're gonna paste it in here and hit enter. This is gonna come up and this is why I wanted to show you. We need to do an additional step. This is gatekeeper saying we can't open this. So we've also are going to use, let me go down to that command here. We have to remove the quarantine extended attribute of this file 
folder. So we're going to use this command to do that. So we're going to go back to terminal and that is an administrator and we are going, it's trying to remove it from that folder that is in the downloads folder. So that's okay to do that. Type in our password or hit the up arrow on our keyboard again twice. And now we've got that whole text in here, that whole block of commands that we're going to run here. And then we're going to hit enter. There we go. It's building and it's opening up and we'll see another window come up here in just a second. Resize this window so we can see. Oh, it's already starting. Here we go. Great. When I first ran this test, it locked up at a black screen and it had this fail to create the voice. And I'll show you what this is going to look like and it just doesn't continue. So once we get to the black screen, I can close the window and we're going to fire it up and again and it should work here. Okay, this is where I got stuck. It wouldn't go anywhere and I thought maybe there was something wrong with the build. But all we need to do is close the window here and we'll quit. And we're back to the command prompt. Hit the up arrow again to run the whole block command again and hit enter. And here we go again. And this time it should work. Once we get to another, the next screen, not this one, there should be a next one that's gonna show windows. Give it a second, oh, look at that. I got to tell you guys, this is exciting. This is really exciting. I mean, we are on the cutting edge here. We got Windows running on our Apple Silicon Mac. Let's just run through the, the setup real quick here. This is going to be part one. I wanted to get this working first. There has already been another patch because there's a little bit of a problem where it uses a lot of the CPU at idle. So there's been a, an upgrade to the patch and I'll do that maybe in our part two. In our part two, we'll also get networking working and Wi-Fi and some of the stuff like that working so we can do some things and do some testing in here. But in this video, I just wanted to get it running. I want you guys to test this out and see for yourself. How cool is this, right? So we'll click yes here. We'll go through this setup here and we don't have internet right now. Just continue with limited setup, accept. We'll walk through the setup here. We'll do just a name. Okay, password and password again. Here is it. All right. And we'll click next on here, next. Normally I turn all these off, but we're just, again, you know, we're just trying to get into the OS here to, this might take several minutes and it didn't. When I first ran through this test, we were literally in, in probably 30 seconds to a minute or so. It's it, I was impressed by the speed of how it worked. It wasn't run, it wasn't lagging. As you can see, when I was walking through the menus, it wasn't like it was lagging or anything. It was running like I was on a normal machine. Again, that's only the setup menu. Once we get in and we actually test some applications or something, that'll kind of be the real world, world test. But from everything that I've seen so far, and when I was in there originally testing around, it was working pretty well. So again, I'm pretty impressed here so far. And here we are. Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview Armed version, and we're in the operating system. Look at this; it's it's not it's not really lagging. It just it seems to be working pretty good here. Look at this; it just not bad. Again, this is only part one. We wanted to get Windows working on Apple Silicon, and we've got it. It's working here, and it seems to be pretty quick. Here's a desktop. We were just running around doing different things in here. And it's what I wanted to show you the, it was activity monitor on the Apple Silicon device itself, because I wanted to talk about the CPU time here. So if we move this over, you can see that it's really kind of hitting the CPU hard. And look at this up here. I'm running TG Pro, and, and again, this is a really cool, and I've tried out the trial here. This is a really cool application that really can now measure the performance and the fan speed and the and the temperature of Apple Silicon now. And you can see the fans running. So it's definitely kind of it's kind of getting up there in the temperature because of the the virtual machine right now. As you can see, it's taking up around 300 to 400 percent in activity monitor so it's definitely definitely kind of kicking in a little bit but uh, as as you can see it's working fairly well part two we'll try to come back in here we'll kind of see if can we get wi-fi working can we get office running can we get any kind of 32-bit apps working let's see what we can do next huge shout outs to alexander who put this patch together and 1958 lack in here who put this beautiful walkthrough here to be able to help everybody give this a test out here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider giving the video a like. Also consider subscribing if you wanna see more content like this in the future. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much and we'll catch you in part two.